a rainy day on the unknown grassy plain finds the heir of Carthage facing off against one of his uh, YouTube friends, Revan. I'm playing a Spain. Let's move through this tree real quick. Take a look at my general. I'm using one of the better historical generals. It is Francisco Castarios, uh, Castaños, sorry, couldn't see it very well. So Francisco Castaños. And uh, he's the uh, next to the best general. You can see the deployment of my army is in the standard uh, Air of Carthage fashion. Skirmishers in the front line, uh, infantry in the rear line, and cavalry to the flanks, and reserve cavalry uh, guarding my general. Let's go take a look at my opponent's army. As I said, my opponent is Revan. He is using three units of sharpshooters, and he's playing as Denmark. So here's his three units of sharpshooters out uh, uh, basically screening for his army. That's a good move. Sorry. <laughs> Lost my words for a minute. Yeah, I set it on dry and again it started raining like crazy. Uh, it just does that sometimes on Napoleon, unfortunately. Let's take a look at some of his cavalry over here. Uh, on this side he's got two units of dragoons. Let's get a close-up of them here. So here's his dragoons, which is basically just uh, mounted line infantry. And, uh, oop, having some camera trouble. Uh, over here, he's got two two units of seven pound howitzers. And let's take a close look at his line infantry. Now his deployment is quite a bit different than my own. Uh, but that's fine. I kind of wondered what would happen. He's deploying in a very concentrated block. And I'm assuming maybe his idea is to try and break through the center. Uh, because most people immediately try to flank like I am on the grassy flatlands. Or at least they deploy in wide uh, armies in an attempt to outflank their opponent. And since he has fewer troops, maybe he's thinking that if he deploys in thick ranks, then he can break through my center and uh, then take out my army in pieces. He is going to have a bit of an artillery advantage, as his howitzers are going to be more deadly. However, my two 9-pound cannons are going to have better range. He has one unit lifeguard a foot, and then I believe six units of line infantry. And he has four units of cavalry. On the one side was two units of dragoons, but on this side is a much stronger contingent of cavalry. And these are the lifeguards. Uh, so there you can see his men are utilizing their superior range. And they do cause uh, some degree of damage to my center units. Which is not uh, to be unexpected in my position. As, uh, I forgot to introduce you my whole army. I have five cazadores, eight line infantry, one garias de infantry. Uh, of course my general, two hussars and a Garias du Cor, um, and two nine-pound cannons. So uh, we're now in a full skirmish phase. You can see uh, from this nice no man's view the crisscross of fire being exchanged across this road. You know the nice thing about the grassy flatlands on Napoleon Total War is that they've added these trees and the road and a little bit of scenery to make it seem a little more feasible than just the straight up green uh, plain like you see on Rome Total War. So here's some of his sharpshooters exchanging fire with my men. And let's take a look at my men in action. Here's some of my men doing their business. My opponent is making a smart move here. He knows that he is outgunned uh, with his skirmishers, so he's going to push up his um, heavy infantry and attempt to break my center. And of course my opponent is well aware that he'll be shooting into the backs of his own men if he stayed in the formation he was. And so he does some reforming and he's going to spread his men out a little and move up and start exchanging fire at close range. Now his lifeguard of foot is going to inspire the, uh, the other parts of his infantry. And again, his men are very bunched up. And I kind of expected my men to just start mowing his down quite easily. But his men uh, end up putting up a ferocious fight. And uh, I was pretty impressed. And he does what I want him to, which is to move forward and let my line infantry get the first volley. In the meantime, my skirmishers are reloading, and I will move them back out to the front um, as soon as uh, they're done reloading and my line fires its first volleys. So, here's some uh, cool war shots. You can see some artillery smoke firing off there, all the muzzle flashes and the fog in the distance. And here come my skirmishers. Um, they're going back out to be artillery fodder and uh, musket fodder and hopefully they'll absorb some of the pain 
uh, from my line infantry. Let's go take a look at my opponent's cavalry, which is charging in now. I counterattacked with my Hussars, and then I also formed one of my units of line infantry into a square. And uh, so his dragoons are going to get pretty well chewed up in this fight. Uh, dragoons are okay cavalry, but they don't have a great charge, and they have pretty good morale, about the same as Hussars. Mainly dragoons can be used to dismount and fight if you need. So there's that fight. And then I believe on the other flank as well, my opponent is uh, making some cavalry assaults. Here he caught some of my Cazadors away from the line, and he did manage to massacre them, but not at a cost to his heavy cavalry. My line infantry gets a lot of shots off at his heavy cav and causes some pretty severe damage. And so he decides to charge forward, and that was a good idea because I wasn't really watching this side. Um, but fortunately he doesn't charge right into my men. I think he might have been trying to do a side charge or something, and it uh, gives my men an opportunity to gun down more of his heavy cav. And at this point I did notice his heavy cavalry and I was thinking about countercharging, but decided instead to move my cavalry out to the flanks and to get ready and do some attacks. In fact, uh, here's my Hussars out here, and I'm gonna attack his lifeguard's force unsuccessfully here in a little while. Yeah, so here, the remainder of his heavy horse are gonna die off fighting my line infantry, but if he's just using them to occupy my time, then they're successful in that, and sometimes that is a good strategy. So, back in the center, I expected my men to just literally um, mow his down because his were so compact. Um, but, uh, his men really stood and fought like crazy. And not only that, they routed my uh, Guardias de Infantieri. And that was an excellent unit. And they've just absolutely punched a hole in the center of my troops. And in a way, that was kind of a smart strategy for him to bunch up his troops here. Because mine are so far spread that he punched through the center. But, <clears throat> unfortunately, and, and I'm not trying to make my opponent sound like he's a bad player, because he wasn't, for sure. Uh, he should have taken this opportunity to, to run some of these excess troops through the hole and to split my army in two. And uh, if he had saved his cavalry for this moment, he could have split my army in two and done a cavalry attack with the wings. And that might have been very devastating. But you know, uh, hindsight's 2020, and my hindsight may not even be 2020. I'm not the best at this game, so I definitely don't want to knock my opponent's strategies. I thought he played really well. And another thing you need to remember is that my opponent is outnumbered by about 400 men. So uh, he's at a severe numeric disadvantage. And on Rome Total War, that may not be a big deal. But on Napoleon Total War, it kind of is a big deal. So I was counting on a large number of lesser quality units. And my opponent was counting on a slightly smaller number of high quality units. And you can see, uh, as I said here, that it was a fierce exchange musket fire in the center. Uh, one that he actually won. Let's take uh, a look at my flanks. I finally moved my uh, infantry uh, into flanking positions, but he's answered with his sharpshooters who are in reserve, and they're going to be up to uh, be able to put up a, a good fight. Uh, their accuracy is much better than my troops at this range, and so I need to do something about those sharpshooters. My hussars died attacking these lifeguards of horse, and I was about to attack him with my uh, my Guardias de Gor, uh, but I decide instead to charge into his light infantry here, and I'm hoping to cause a chain route on this side of the battlefield uh, due to his troops starting to waver in their morale. So here I do a heavy cavalry charge into sharpshooters, and they have no real way to defend themselves against this type of cavalry. And you can see their morale just plummeting, and they route, and this other unit routes without me even attacking them. And because their morale drops, this unit of uh, line infantry starts to waver. One unit routes, uh, other units wavering, then they route because of the horses in the rear. And then the next unit of line infantry is shaken, and then they waver, and now they're going to route as well. So my idea of the chain route did work, and I'm now going to take my heavy cavalry out of that fight and take them on to destroy his artillery piece and his lifeguards of force. So let me say good game to my opponent Revan. I will get you to the results screen. It was a fun battle. I enjoyed that he played a bit of a different strategy and it was kinda curious like I said it's possible that had he shoved through my center there that he could have split me in two and then reserved his cavalry for the right moment and he might have been able to knock my uh, two wings out at that moment. 
but who knows. Uh, but like I said, good game to my opponent. Hope you enjoyed the video. Alright, here's the results screen. Um, you can see the number of troops we deployed. Like I said, I deployed almost 400 more men, so I definitely had a huge numeric advantage. And uh, there's our losses and our kills. Good game to Revan. Appreciate him offering the game. And anybody who wants to offer me a game when you see me on Steam, I may not be able to play you, but feel free to offer. You're not going to bother me. Uh, I do enjoy getting to play um, friends and YouTube fans because the games tend to be a lot more fun. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to more Napoleon battles in the future.